Chairman. Senator Barrasso. Thank you, Senator Schatz. Uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, President Biden has described the evacuation from Afghanistan as an extraordinary success. His words, extraordinary success. This has to be the lie of the 21st century. It's dishonest, and if he believes it, it's delusional. America can no longer ever say we leave no American behind, because Joe Biden did. And by your own testimony and your words this morning, there are still about 100 Americans trapped behind enemy lines. We've heard a lot about the 13 U.S. service members who died a couple of weeks ago. One was Riley McCollum of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He was 20 years old, signed up for the Marines on his 18th birthday. Uh, his wife Gigi, expecting a baby. The baby was delivered just yesterday, a baby girl. I stood with Riley's family and his then pregnant wife on Friday in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, as his remains were brought back in a flag-draped coffin from Afghanistan. Never made it back home alive as a result of this administration's failures. People of Wyoming view this as having lost one of their sons, one of their children, and it is a devastating loss. And they really do believe, believe that it is the administration who should hold the blame for what has occurred. Look, th this withdrawal, and you've heard it from other senators on both sides of the aisle, has been an epic failure. No planning, no strategy. No, it was cobbled together at the last minute, disorganized. It didn't have to be this way. I'm thinking back to your confirmation hearing. I've raised a number of questions and concerns about your record on foreign policy failures in Syria, in Libya, in Iran. I said these botched decisions have serious consequences. I said I believe they embolden terrorist organizations around the globe. I said your decisions in the past have put lives of men and women who serve our nation at risk because of these failures. And I said I think it would be a grave mistake to confirm a Secretary of State who has a demonstrated track record of repeatedly making the wrong decisions when it comes to American foreign policy and national security. And the actions I've seen from you over the last seven months have proven my assessment to be correct. The Biden administration's missteps are numerous. Failed to start evacuation operations until the fall of Kabul in August, despite announcing the withdrawal in April. Failed to heed the warnings of a collapse of the Afghan government and security forces in spite of warnings. Failed to prepare for a rapid Taliban takeover. Failed to adapt the politically motivated deadline for uh, withdrawal to the situation taking place on the ground because they were so focused on the calendar on the wall. Failed to keep Bagram Air Force Base, a place I've visited about eight or nine times. The U.S. military base, two runways that could be used to help evacuate civilians. And we just heard failure to prevent a vast arsenal of weapons from getting into the hands of the Taliban. I mean, it seems the most egregious, though, that I hear about in Wyoming and people all across the country are most offended by is abandoning American citizens as well as abandoning our allies in Afghanistan. Senator Portman went over the numbers. The Washington Post called it a moral disaster. I think it's a moral disgrace. You nearly dislocated your shoulder, though, patting yourself on the back for the great job you've done. I mean, just yesterday, you stated we did the right thing by our citizens in working feverishly to get every one of them out. But, but you didn't get every one of them out. You've admitted again and again we're talking about over 100 Americans. The top priority must always be getting all Americans home safely. And now with no U.S. personnel in Afghanistan, the Americans that President Biden left behind, instead of going on national TV and saying, we will not take the troops out until every American is out, look, their options for escaping are, are dwindling. So I'm trying to put this all together to say, how did we end up here? Um, in April, the president made a decision at, uh, to announce everyone would be out by August 31st. May 8th, there was a rehearsal of, of, of concept, which is the address rehearsal for withdrawal. Uh, I, I know that the, the National Security Council was there, the Secretary of Defense, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Secretary of Homeland Security, they were all there. Um, my understanding is that you did not attend. Is that true? My deputy uh, responsible for uh, the, uh, the operation was there. I, I know where you were. I think you should have been here instead. I understand in late June the State Department was getting nervous because the military drawdown was 
moving on schedule, but not the civilian drawdown. You were running behind. I understand State Department was talking to the Defense Department to slow down the pace of military withdrawal, calling actually for, quote, tapping the brakes on military withdrawal. Isn't that true? Senator, I'm uh, not going to get into any uh, internal deliberations or discussions that, uh, that we had. Uh, we worked on this uh, together every step of the way. In July, you got more warnings, State Department, things were getting bad. When did the State Department formally make the request to the Department of Defense for military-assisted evacuation, the non-combatant evacuation operation? Because that's a secretary or ambassador job. Uh, the, 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 the NEO was being planned, if necessary, uh, throughout the spring and summer. We revised the, uh, the plans uh, on a number of occasions. And ultimately, when the uh, government and security forces unexpectedly collapsed in the 11 days, uh, the NEO went into effect. So middle of August. That's correct. And why did you wait so long? Because we had a government and security forces in place uh, that, by every uh, estimate, uh, would be able to protect the city, protect Kabul, uh, protect the other provincial capitals, uh, certainly through the year. So yesterday you testified that the Taliban has been designated a terrorist organization. I want to be very clear on this, because that's what you said yesterday. Quote, the Taliban has been designated a terrorist organization. Does this administration believe the Taliban is a terrorist organization? Uh, it's designated under one of the designations. Uh, and any engagement that we have will be purely for the purposes of advancing our interests. Under one of the designations. Yes, when does this administration plan to list the Taliban as U.S. designated foreign Especially terrorist designated organization? Especially uh, designated terrorist organization. That's correct. And you testified this morning about the SIV washout rate. I think it's about 40 percent that they don't Before qualify. the chief of mission approval. That's correct. So, so what percentage of the Afghan population that left Afghanistan as part of our U.S. evacuation uh, efforts what percentage of those were vetted before they actually got on the airplanes? Uh, before they got on the airplanes yeah. uh, to leave Kabul? Uh, certainly not. Most of them were not. That's exactly why we established transit points in countries through negotiations with those countries to make sure that before anyone came to the United States, uh, they would be uh, vetted by uh, the different law enforcement and security agencies. So we established agreements uh, with uh, well more than a dozen countries. So, so who were you letting on the planes? Anybody that showed up? Well, initially, uh, as you know, there were uh, people who managed to flood the airport. Uh, we had to do an uh, immediate assessment of those. We had to make sure we could clear people out of the airport so that the flights could come in, go out. But no one uh, came to the United States uh, without being checked somewhere else first to make sure that they don't pose a security threat. I think my, my time's expired. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would just have to Thank say you. I spent time uh, overseas last week talking to our NATO allies at a security conference as well as uh, with uh, NATO individuals, and I'll tell you, our enemies are emboldened and our allies are enraged. Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr.